In this episode, we're going to look at a company that has increased its dividend by more than 3,300%, and it's on its way to becoming a dividend king. Hi, my name is Kanwal Sarai, and welcome to the Simply Investing Dividend Podcast. In this episode, we're going to cover the following four topics. We're going to start off with an introduction to our company that we are going to look at in this episode. Then we will look at the company's dividend history. After that, we'll look at the stock price history. And then finally, we'll look at the return since 1999. We're going to look at total return from this company. So let's begin with our first topic, the introduction to our company. So the company we're going to talk about and look at in today's episode was founded in 1940. It is based in Chicago, Illinois in the US, so it's an American-based company. It has today over 100,000 employees. The company has, again, a market cap as of this recording of a little over $193 billion. Now, if you haven't figured it out yet, perhaps this last clue is going to help you figure out which company we're looking at. And so this company is the largest fast food restaurant chain in the world. So in today's episode, we are looking at none other than McDonald's. So let's get started by looking at the company's dividend history. So McDonald's first paid its dividend in 1976. And if we look at the numbers here on the screen, we're only going to go back to 1999 because we're trying to figure out what was the return on our investment since then. So you can see here, we are listing all of the dividends since 1999. And you can see back then, the annual dividend per share was 19 cents. And then today, as of this recording, the company has a current annual dividend per share of $6.68. So this represents an incredible increase of 3,390% in the dividend alone. And this is an incredible track record. Very few companies can achieve this level of dividend growth since 1999. And so what this means is every time the company increases its dividend, that's more money in your pocket. Right, So remember, the dividend is deposited directly into your trading account if you hold shares in companies that pay dividends. And that dividend is coming to you as cash. So you can spend that dividend if you wish, or you could reinvest it into other companies that are paying dividends as well. So just by holding on to the shares, and in this case, we're going to look at McDonald's in today's episode, we're going to show you how much you could have earned in just dividends alone, and then we'll look at the share price as well. So this is an incredible increase of over 3,300% in just the dividend alone, going from 19 cents a share to $6.68. So if we take a look at an example, let's say you invested $10,000 back in 1999 in McDonald's shares. Today, those shares would provide you with $1,736 in dividends every year. Regardless of the stock price, stock price can go up and down regardless of what happens in the stock market. But as long as McDonald's continues to pay its current dividend and you continue to hold on to the shares that you would have bought in 1999, you can expect to receive over $1,700 in dividends as cash every single year. So think about that for a moment. That's over five years, that's more than $6,000 in dividends alone. So the other thing to look at is what I call the break-even point. And in this example, you can see the arrow is pointing at around 2018 and 2019. So by the end of 2018, you would expect in this example to break even which means the dividends alone would have covered your initial investment in this company. So 
what this means is that each dividend increase actually increases your margin of safety. Because by the time you got into the year 2019, your investment would have already, you would have recouped your entire investment. So if you invested $5,000 in McDonald's or even $1,000 in McDonald's or $20,000, by the time you got to 2019, you would have received all of that money back in dividends. So regardless of, I don't know what the share price was back in 2019, you know, let's let's assume it was a ninety dollars a share or hundred dollars a share. You wouldn't really care if the stock price dropped to fifty dollars a share or even thirty dollars a share, because you would have already have made your money back from the dividends alone. So every dividend increase takes your risk and it lowers it. So every time a dividend goes up, your risk goes down, and your margin of safety grows. So in this example, we're going to stick with the $10,000 investment, you know, $10,000, $10 to be exact. In 1999, you would have bought 260 shares and you can see the dividend income every single year since 1999. What we're going to look at here, there's a lot of numbers on the screen. Let's just focus on the total. So in this example, anybody investing in McDonald's in 1999, purchasing 260 shares and then just sitting sitting on those shares that's it you're not going to buy and trade you're just going to hold on to those shares you would have received over eighteen thousand five hundred dollars in dividends remember i said the break-even point was around 2018 2019 that's where you would have recouped all of your initial investment and then after that it's pure profit and so that is the total number of dividends is like I said, a little over $18,500 in dividends. Now, take a look at this uh, graph up on the screen here. Again, we're only going back to 1999 and we're looking at the dividends every single year for McDonald's. And this is a very nice graph. This is what we wanna see. As dividend investors, we wanna see the dividend going up, 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 and up steadily. We wanna see a nice, steady, increase. And so what does this graph tell us, right? Nobody can predict the future, right? We don't know what's going to happen next week, next month, or next year with the stock price or with the dividends. But when we look at a graph like this, we can have a high degree of confidence that this company will at least pay us a dividend next year and hopefully increase it next year as well, because we can see the track record over the last 25 years. It's incredible. So the opposite of this would be a graph that's going down or a graph that's completely random where companies pay a dividend, then they cancel the dividend, then they pay it again and they cancel it. That's completely random. We want to see a solid track record. And this is a great example with McDonald's. The last 25 years, the dividends have just been going up, up, up and up continuously. So this is a great example of a graph. As dividend investors, that's the type of graph we want to see when we look at a company's dividend track record because like i said it's going to give us a high degree of confidence that the dividends will continue to be paid and remember like i said in a couple of minutes ago every time the dividend goes up your margin of safety goes up and your risk comes down so mcdonald's in fact has had 48 years of consecutive dividend increases that's incredible. I'm going to say that again, 48 years of consecutive dividend increases. Think about how many market crashes we've had in the last 48 years, how many market downturns we've had, but yet this company has continued to not only pay a dividend, but to increase it year after year after year for 48 years. So this makes McDonald's a dividend aristocrat. Dividend aristocrats are companies that have had at least 25 years of consecutive dividend increases. Now, this company is on its way to becoming a dividend king. A dividend king are companies that have had at least 50 years of consecutive dividend increases. So McDonald's is very close, and as dividend investors, we are all looking forward to that day 
when McDonald's, the stock, becomes a dividend king. Now, let's move on to our third topic in today's episode, is take a quick look at the company's stock price history. So this is really easy. You can see it up on the screen here. Again, we're only going back to 1999. We could go back further, just the graph would be a little bit bigger. But for the last 25 years, you can see here the stock price performance of McDonald's. And you can see overall the company has done really well. The stock price has continued to go up, up, and up. You'll notice that there are dips here and there. There are times where the company's stock price drops by $5 a share, $10 a share, even $20 a share, and even more. I think around 2020, or we can see a little bigger drop on the graph here up on the screen. So how can a company like this continue to pay a dividend and continue to increase the dividend every year when its stock price tanks? I mean, that's a huge drop. $10 a share, $20, $30 a share. These are large drops. So how can this company continue to do that or any other company uh, in the same situation? Well, the reason is the dividends are not paid from the stock price. The dividends are paid from the earnings. So as long as the company has a solid track record of consistently growing its earnings, then they can continue to not only pay the dividend, but to increase it as well. So you, this is a great example. You're taking advantage of capital appreciation and dividends and dividend increases as well uh, in a company such as this. And that's why I wanted to really highlight this company in today's episode as a great example of a dividend payer, right? A solid blue chip company that has a solid track record of paying dividends and growing dividends. And our focus as dividend investors, and I've been doing this for over 24 years, is our focus is on the dividend income and not on the stock price itself. So let's move on to the next slide here. And you can see, I'm going to give you an example. In 1999, the stock was trading at $38 a share. Today, as of this recording, it is trading at $268 a share. So that's quite uh, an increase from where the stock price used to be. So if you had invested $10,010, which was 260 shares, if you invested $10,000 back in 1999, today those shares would be worth over $69,800. So that is an incredible increase. That's a great return on your investment, but that's not the whole story. Let's take a look at our last topic, which is the total return since 1999. So we're going to go back to the previous slide I just showed you, right? Imagine you had invested $10,000 back in 1999. The stocks, the stock price went up, so the stocks would be worth more. Today, they would be worth over $69,800. But what's missing here is the dividends. So remember, I showed you this earlier. This was the dividends since 1999. You can see the dividends have gone up every single year since then. And the total dividends received in this example was $18,559. So now let's take that and add that to our capital appreciation. And let's take a look at what has been the total return on this investment. So to figure out the total value at the end of the day, we're going to take our capital appreciation, which is the stock price going up, plus the dividends to see what our initial $10,000 investment would be worth today in McDonald's. So we take the $69,800 and we're going to add the $18,500, which are the dividends. And so that tells us that our $10,000 well, $10,010 investment today would be worth over $88,400. So that is a great return on your investment. It represents a 783% return. And all you had to do was purchase the shares and hold on to them and collect the dividends. There was no buying or selling or active trading 
we're watching the stock price and then selling it and then buying it again and then selling and buying it again, that requires a lot of time and effort and a lot of work. So if we want to keep investing simple, we're going to look at good quality stocks and I'll show you towards the end of the video how to figure out what is a good quality stock and then hold on to it. Because with the dividends, you get paid while you're holding on to your shares. Without the dividend, you're not getting any return on your investment until you sell. And without the dividend, you have to hope for the stock price to keep going up. But hope is not going to cover your living expenses. But dividends can do that. Okay, so let's get back to our example here because there is some more good news on top of the 783% return. Now remember, the stock price back in 1999 was $38.50. The dividend back then was $0.19, cents, but the dividend today is $6.68 per share. So what we're going to calculate now is the dividend yield based on the purchase price. Because you want to know what is the return on your investment every year while you hold on to these shares. Right? You invested $10,000 back in 1999 and you had a lot of choice. You could have put that money in a, a term deposit or in a bond or in a, a money market fund or an index fund or all sorts of other investments. So you want to know what is that $10,000 that you invested in? What is it earning you today? So how we figure that out is really simple. We take the current dividend and we divide it by the purchase price. So you can see the current dividend was $6.68. We're going to divide it by the purchase price, which was $38.50. And we're going to express that number as a percentage. And you can see it's 17.35%. So in this example, if you still held on to the shares, you would be earning 17.35% a year in dividends. So in this example, we started off with a $10,000 investment in 1999. So you'd be earning 17.35% every year on $10,000. That is the return on your investment while you hold on to those shares. And like I showed you before, that represents roughly $1,735 annually in dividends. So you compare that number to what's available today in a term deposit. Or if you're in Canada, they call them GICs or CDs or bonds, um, you cannot make 17.35% a year in any of those kinds of investments. But here we're looking at an investment, had you started early, and that's the, the theme in all of our episodes, is the younger you start, the better off you're going to be. As an investor, you don't want to wait uh, years or decades, you want to start sooner than later. Then you are now looking at and a, uh, an investment in McDonald's, which is providing double digit returns annually just for holding on to the shares. The dividends have already covered your initial capital investment, so your risk has gone down to zero. Your margin of safety is very high, and you're earning double digit returns. So, to summarize all of this in one slide, in this example that we looked at today with McDonald's, we started in 1999 investing $10,010. That investment today, including dividends, would be worth over $88,400. And the investment would continue to make you 17.35% a year return on the initial $10,000 investment, as long as you hold on to those shares and as long as the company continues to pay the dividend. Now, if the company increases the dividend, like they've been doing for the last 48 years, then your dividend yield based on the purchase price will also go up. So it's 17.35% today. It might go up to 18% next year, maybe 19% after that, and so on and so on. So does this mean that you should just go out and buy any stock that pays a dividend, just like McDonald's pays a dividend? And the short answer is no. There's a couple of more things we need to look at. And our approach to investing is to invest in quality, dividend-paying stocks when they're priced low. So not just at any price, but when they're priced low. We call them undervalued. Not when they're overvalued, but when they're undervalued. So how do you know when you're looking at any stock anywhere in the world? 
if it's priced low and how do you know if it's a quality stock? Well, for that, I've created what I call the 12 rules of simply investing. You can see the 12 rules up on the screen here. I'll just quickly go through them uh, so you get an idea of what the 12 rules are. But this is simply your checklist. Before you invest in any stock, make sure it passes all of the 12 rules. Not just nine out of the rules or eight out of the rules. It has to pass all of the 12 rules before you make an investment in any company. So rule number one, do you understand how the company is making money? If you don't, skip it, move on to something else. Rule number two, 20 years from now, will people still need its product and services? Rule number three, does the company have a low cost competitive advantage? Rule number four, is it recession proof? Rule number five, is it profitable? Rule number six, does it grow its dividend? Rule number seven, can the company afford to pay the dividend? Rule number eight, is the debt less than 70%? Rule number nine, avoid any company with recent dividend cuts. Rule number 10, does the company buy back its own shares? Rule number 11, is the stock priced low? So we look at three things there. We're gonna look at the PE ratio, we're gonna look at the PB ratio, and we're gonna compare the current yield to the company's average 20 year yield. If the current yield is higher than the 20 year average, then we consider the stock to be undervalued, priced low. If the company passes all three conditions, then it passes rule number 11. Rule number 12, keep your emotions out of investing. So for those of you that are interested, I have an online self-paced uh, Simply Investing course. Uh, the course is divided into 10 modules. Uh, in module one, we cover the investing basics. Module two, we cover the 12 rules of Simply Investing. Module three, you'll learn how to apply the 12 rules yourself to any stock anywhere in the world. Module four, we'll show you how to use the Simply Investing platform. Module five, we'll take you step by step in placing your first stock order. Module six, building and tracking your portfolio. Module seven, when to sell, which is just as important as to know when to buy. Mod module number eight, how to reduce your risk and fees, especially when it comes to mutual funds, index funds, ETFs. Module nine, your action plan for getting started right away. And module 10, answering your most frequently asked questions. We also have the Simply Investing platform that applies these rules to over 6,000 companies in the US and in Canada every single day. So you can log into the platform and immediately see which companies to consider and which companies to avoid. So if you're interested either in the course or the platform or both, you may, write, uh, may wanna write down the coupon code SAVE10, S-A-V-E-1-0, SAVE10. The coupon code is going to get you 10% off of the course or the platform as well. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button as well. We have a new episode out every week. And for more information, take a look at simplyinvesting.com. Thanks for watching.